What's going on everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the Youngstown State Dynasty picking things up here in MVP Baseball 07 for the baseball portion of this series man and we haven't checked in with our baseball guys in a while but it looks like they're doing better than they were in year one coming in with a 12 and 17 record however when you check out the conference standings right now we are sitting at the top we are leading by one game over evansfield and southern illinois granted gotta take that with a grain of salt because we um there's only one team over 500 in this conference and it's wichita state out of nine so you know we're definitely not in the best conference to say the least but we'll see if we can uh like even things out here as we check out what we got going on for the month of april we actually got two double headers this month we have the bradley double header that's this saturday and then the following uh weekend we have like an indiana state double header so a lot going on here man we got a lot going down for sure but man i'm excited about this episode i'm excited about this episode for sure we got a really easy challenge in store for us uh we we accepted this challenge for the um level two gloves so that will help raise our uh, team prestige a little bit all we literally have to do is win one game against bradley and we'll, we'll get some new gloves man so you know should be pretty straightforward we got three games to do it we're playing against one of the lesser teams in the conference we should be able to take one right so we'll go ahead and jump right into it man um i'm not really feeling this day game i'm really feeling the night game so we'll go ahead and quick sim real quick and oh moresi gets hurt right off rip he it has an inflamed right shoulder he's going to be out for two to three weeks so you hate to see that so we lose six to nothing in the first game and that brings our conference record down to four and three but we got the night game man and you know what time it is man we are going to jump right into it hope you guys are excited for this episode if you are make sure you go ahead you smash that like button and then also on top of it make sure you hit that subscribe button as well but with that man i will see you guys on the field let's go get it baby all right boys so here we are on the field here and we get a little bit of trouble here in the top of the first inning facing two outs and potentially a run scoring situation but we do find a way to get out of that inning though we don't at least we don't give up runs you know to start this game right as we go up against doug rushford who you know does not have very much stamina for being a starting pitcher but that being said he's got a couple of solid pitches as we'll jump into the top of the seventh inning as we got a little bit of an error in the outfield my man going all the way to third base is he gonna get ho home no but a runner in scoring position man let's go let's see if we can finally go ahead and get that goose egg off the board we'll see if we can bring him home here we get a decent contact but the right fielder is going to calmly field this ball and we don't end up scoring a matter of fact this was a persistent issue throughout the course of this game as we play a full nine innings and seriously nobody gets close to scoring it remains zero to zero going into the 10th inning and at that point i just went ahead and you know switch from a new perspective went into the coaching mode see if we can encourage a little bit more offense here as we jump into the extra innings as Brian we try to get something going there but does not lead to anything however Joey Diamond with a chance to win the game and he does so we technically win our first game in gameplay winning one to nothing so we take a quick break from the action on the baseball diamond to get our very first look at the football team for year number three and yeah, we only have 52 players, but I really like the class that we brought in, particularly for this season and particularly on the defensive side of the football. We brought in some extremely talented players 
in this recruiting class most of which will be starters and honestly i really don't want to make any changes one matchup to definitely watch out for is this uh, quarterback battle between chris ty and jack flash depending on how much of the offense jack flash does end up um getting into you know getting an understanding of this offseason you know he could be the full-time starting quarterback while chris ty uh ends up getting relegated to the bench completely uh which would be sad because he is one of the best players on the team but that being said jody gentry should still continue to be the starting running back isaac jeffrey should be the starting fullback one position that i will be concerned about and hopefully we can address in next year's recruiting class is wide receiver i wanted to get some wide receivers but it just didn't really happen for us we only signed this two-star donnie williams he'll probably play right away as maybe a uh as our wide receiver four hopefully ty james cam jones or scott thomas you know get themselves up close to like a low to mid 70s uh wide receiver might be our weakest position on the team but we did end up signing ed ortiz he'll probably be our best weapon right away now as for the offensive line we will have sean taylor once again he will be a first team all conference guy uh and then we signed four four guards yeah we signed a lot of offensive linemen uh one of which i am actually going to move i'm gonna move nick hawkins out to left tackle even though he jumps down to a 70 it's better than the prospect of having say uh like david reed uh start at that um at that uh tackle position so actually i need to move him to right tackle there we go so that so that should solidify our offensive line uh joe reed will be the odd man probably be like our sixth man uh, for the offensive line but i will consider our offensive line quote unquote fix uh we do have to work on getting depth which is hard to do when you have 15 scholarships but i think we should be done with that now i am also considering going into a free four defense and the reason i'm considering that you know defensive end we got michael mcclain and jordan smith as true freshmen that should be good there and then randy sudden is great but then behind him don't really want to see alvin montoya or calvin williams start so i'm going to switch to a free four um since craig franken will at least be in the 60s that would be a little bit better for us moving forward middle linebacker though brian brooks and david silva they both need to be on the field at the same time because they are both very talented football players rounding things out we do uh got our defensive backfield fixed up we needed some corners we were definitely short on corner it's bad when your quarterback has to also play db uh do a little bit of a two-man action you know two-way uh but we got that fixed up we bring it in richmond bates and Quinn williams uh they will be our starting corners i would imagine for this season and then in free safety we'll still have adam reed uh but then we also got chaz jones behind him he'll kind of be waiting in the wings uh, with adam reed starting now for strong safety timmy Brin one is the best player that we brought in for this recruiting class he comes in as an 82 overall so we should go ahead and make an immediate impact for our football team and keep in mind this is also before we have training results um which i imagine we'll probably take a look at you know next uh next episode maybe for the may episode uh, i know y'all aren't as interested in the as the baseball portion as the football portion so you know wanted to show a little bit more of the football off season uh you know get that integrated a little bit more but yeah i expect this roster to be maybe a c rating c plus rating perhaps uh and that would be really good considering we only have 52 guys so we get through the remaining part of the month of april and it's been a real good month man we are now just three games under 500 we increase our national ranking and most importantly where we're looking at right now we are looking like a team that is very well you know looking pretty secure for a conference uh championship spot you know being in that top six that's what we need to do in order to be where we need to be right so we're, we're out here man we are so much better than we were last year just you know doing better things overall as a team we're 11 and 7 in conference play and now we come up on this Craigden game now Craigden is 12 and 23 and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and coach this matchup it's gonna be 
you know, interesting to see how we do in the coaching. Um, you, you guys let me know, by the way, wherever you want to see, like, actual gameplay or me just coaching. Because I feel like it is a lot harder to actually go about, like, actually, um, going ahead and, you know, making things happen, like, in-game than it does, like, for, the, like, the coaching. So, y'all let me know down in the comments as we'll go ahead and get things started. And we do have a clean inning to at least start things out, but... We got runners in scoring position. Tim Bynum at the plate, but he does end up getting out, though. So we do not have any run score in that inning. We're in a little bit of trouble ourselves. Bases loaded, two outs, and two runs score. So we're down to nothing uh, off rip here in the top of the third inning. Jacob Lakefield, though, gets a triple and puts himself in scoring position, but just do not necessarily you know get what we need um as we are actually really struggling uh in terms of like producing some offense it just hasn't necessarily happened for us yet today but runs on a corner we got one out can we bring somebody home no we had two chances and it just didn't happen for us right so that is unfortunate and we give up a home run so we are now down four to nothing here just trying to get out of this inning and we do but we really need our bats to come around here we need some offense bases loaded there's one run there's two how about this four runs now make it five and we get seven runs in the inning man let's go baby so we take a 7-4 lead man and that is something i really love to see gonna go ahead and sub in our picture we're gonna bring in morassi uh in uh to the game uh let's try to see if we can start uh go ahead and see if we can get a couple of solid innings out of him and sure enough we got at least one solid inning at the very least i do really like to see that can we get the same thing here in the bottom of the seventh a little bit more trouble here but we do end up getting out of it though so top of the eighth now we're up seven to four gonna see if we can extend this lead a little bit but we don't manage to do that unfortunately so it still remains a free run lead for us here although actually it looks like uh roberts is not available oh i actually did not see that coming so i'm gonna sub in hunter here for the eighth inning uh so he can he'll have to come in and play setup for our closer but and he does that he has a clean inning so when the bottom of the ninth rolls around, we'll be able to go ahead and bring him in. But we might not even need to. Five run lead. Uh, feeling pretty comfortable, to be honest. I'll let Hunter start the inning. But if runs are allowed to be scored here, I am bringing in the closer. And yeah, we're uh, we're not going to mess around here. Nine five lead. I'm trying to shut the door. Let's go ahead and see if Moeller, our closer, can do just that. But he's struggling a little bit, but we get out of it. We win by a final score of 9-5 to five in this one. And that improves our record, man. We are now 20-22. and 22. We have twice as many wins, I'm pretty sure, than we did all of last year. So, great stuff. You love to see it. So, during that Kragnan series, we actually secure a spot in the conference tournament. So, we go ahead and simulate the rest of the regular season and... You know, finishing pretty strong, man. I'm feeling good where we are. We had this series against Missouri State, and we win two of our last three games. So we will finish the regular season with a record of 22 and 24. And that does put us, you know, it's, it's twice as many wins as we had last year. We finished with a 14 and 9 conference record. And right now we're looking at roughly a, you know, second place spot. Uh, I would imagine the postseason tournament. Depends on what Northern Iowa does. Maybe we get the first place spot, but a, a much better season than we had last year. The baseball team on the up and up, and I do really like to see that. So there it is, boys. We end up qualifying as the number three seed. Not as high up as I anticipated. I thought we'd at least be a top two seed. That's not how it shakeouts, but... The most important thing is we are in the conference tournament and that's important to me because although our national rank is better than what it was last year we still finish with the 112th uh, national ranking 
uh, in America. So I have a feeling that if we want to go ahead and make it to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2014, what we need to do, we need to win this conference tournament. That's just straight up and down. That's what we need to do in order to get the job done. So guys, I'm going to save that for next episode. We'll have conference tournament action. And if you guys are excited for it, man, make sure you go ahead, smash that like button, hit subscribe as well if you do happen to be brand new. And with that, this is John Shea Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.